The Science of Being Great Book by Wallace D. Waddles Narrated by Andrew Originally published in 1910 This is a great audiobook production created for research, study, and discussion purposes. Chapter 6 The Social Point of View Without faith it is impossible to please God, and without faith it is impossible for you to become great. The distinguishing characteristic of all really great men and women is an unwavering faith. We see this in Lincoln during the dark days of the war. We see it in Washington at Valley Forge. We see it in Livingstone, the crippled missionary, threading the mazes of the dark continent, his soul aflame with the determination to let in the light upon the accursed slave trade. Which is soul abhorred, we see it in Luther, and in Francis Willard, in every man and woman who has attained a place on the muster roll of the great ones of the world. Faith not a faith in oneself, or in one's own powers, but faith in principle, in the something great which upholds right, and which may be relied upon to give us the victory in due time. Without this faith, it is not possible for anyone to rise to real greatness. The man who has no faith in principle will always be a small man. Whether you have this faith or not depends upon your point of view. You must learn to see the world as being produced by evolution, as a something that is evolving and becoming, not as a finished work. Millions of years ago God worked with very low and crude forms of life, low and crude, yet each perfect after its kind. Higher and more complex organisms, animal and vegetable, appeared through the successive ages. The earth passed through stage after stage in its unfolding, each stage perfect in itself, and to be succeeded by a higher one. What I wish you to note is that the so-called lower organisms are as perfect after their kind as the higher ones, that the world in the Eocene period was perfect for that period. It was perfect, but God's work was not finished. This is true of the world today. Physically, socially, and industrially it is all good, and it is all perfect. It is not complete anywhere or in any part, but so far as the handiwork of God is gone it is perfect. This must be your point of view, that the world and all it contains is perfect. Though not completed, all's right with the world. That is the great fact. There is nothing wrong with anything. There is nothing wrong with anybody. All the facts of life you must contemplate from this standpoint. There is nothing wrong with nature. Nature is a great advancing presence working beneficently for the happiness of all. All things in nature are good. She has no evil. She is not completed, for creation is still unfinished, but she is going on to give to man even more bountifully than she has given to him in the past. Nature is a partial expression of God, and God is love. She is perfect but not complete. So it is of human society and government. What though there are trusts and combinations of capital and strikes and lockouts and so on. All these things are part of the forward movement. They are incidental to the evolutionary process of completing society. When it is complete there will be harmony, but it cannot be completed without them. J. P. Morgan is as necessary to the coming social order as the strange animals of the age of reptiles were to the life of the succeeding period. And just as these animals were perfect after their kind, so Morgan is perfect after his kind. Behold, it is all very good. See government and industry as being perfect now and as advancing rapidly toward being complete. Then you will understand that there is nothing to fear, no cause for anxiety, nothing to worry about. Never complain of any of these things. They are perfect. This is the very best possible world for the stage of development man has reached. This will sound like rank folly to many, perhaps to most people. What, they will say, are not child labor and the exploitation of men and women in filthy and unsanitary factories evil things? Aren't saloons evil? Do you mean to say that we shall accept all these and call them good? Child labor and similar things are no more evil than the way of living and the habits and practices of the cave dweller were evil. His ways were those of the savage stage of man's growth, and for that stage they were perfect. Our industrial practices are those of the savage stage of industrial development, and they are also perfect. Nothing better is possible until we cease to be mental savages in industry and business, and become men and women. This can only come about by the rise of the whole race to a higher viewpoint. And this can only come about by the rise of such individuals here and there as are ready for the higher viewpoint. The cure for all this inharmoniousness lies not with the masters or employers, but with the workers themselves. Whenever they reach a higher viewpoint, 
Whenever they shall desire to do so, they can establish complete brotherhood and harmony in industry, they have the numbers and the power. They are getting now what they desire. Whenever they desire more in the way of a higher, purer, more harmonious life, they will receive more. True, they want more now, but they only want more of the things that make for animal enjoyment, and so industry remains in the savage, brutal, animal stage. When the workers begin to rise to the mental plane of living and ask for more of the things that make for the life of the mind and soul, industry will at once be raised above the plane of savagery and brutality. But it is perfect now upon its plane, behold, in fact it is all very good. So it is true of saloons and dens of vice. If the majority of the people desire these things, it is right and necessary that they should have them. When the majority desires a world without such discords, they will create such a world. So long as men and women are on the plane of bestial thought, so long the social order will be in part disorder and will show bestial manifestations. The people make society what it is, and as the people rise above the bestial thought, society will rise above the beastly in its manifestations. But a society which thinks in a bestial way must have saloons and dives, it is perfect after its kind as the world was in the Eocene period, and very good. All this does not prevent you from working for better things. You can work to complete an unfinished society, instead of to renovate a decaying one, and you can work with a better heart and a more hopeful spirit. It will make an immense difference with your faith and spirit whether you look upon civilization as a good thing that is becoming better, or as a bad and evil thing that is decaying. One viewpoint gives you an advancing and expanding mind, and the other gives you a descending and decreasing mind. One viewpoint will make you grow greater, and the other will inevitably cause you to grow smaller. One will enable you to work for the eternal things, to do large works in a great way toward the completing of all that is incomplete and inharmonious. And the other will make you a mere patchwork reformer, working almost without hope to save a few lost souls from what you will grow to consider a lost and doomed world. So you see it makes a vast difference to you, this matter of the social viewpoint. All's right with the world. Nothing can possibly be wrong but my personal attitude, and I will make that right. I will see the facts of nature and all the events, circumstances, and conditions of society, politics, government, and industry from the highest viewpoint. It is all perfect, though incomplete. It is all the handiwork of God. Behold, it is all very good. For more audiobook like this, hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new audiobook. Thanks for listening.